nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, take. Are you recording? Marcus Scholes again, and we're now at his uh, studio. This is where he uh, creates everything, his uh, mad creation center, his laboratory, so to speak. He's like a scientist. 
Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about um, how you uh, how you create? Well, some it depends if I'm doing an original project or if I'm doing a remix for somebody. Um, for example, I just finished up remixing a new song for Everything But The Girl. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that case, I get the vocal track, just the vocals, nothing else, and I recreate the entire music bed for it. Um, so obviously I, I start off with, with a melody and some generic drum beats and, uh, and then really start tinkering, getting deep into the sounds and, uh, and, and just making sure that it hits really hard and, and it's really uh, out there. Um, so, but when I do an original project, Usually when I do these remixes, um, it usually spawns ideas, right. like, oh, I want to try this or I want to try that, but it just doesn't fit the project. So on my original projects, I experiment a little bit more um, with ideas that have been brewing in my head for a while. So do you start out with a task in mind and then often like change it as you go? And then oh. How many unfinished projects do you have like on the <laughs> shelf right now? I, quite a bit. I a mean, I, there's all when what I start off with is never what I end with, um, and uh, it's it's funny because you you can go through my computer and just find files of stuff that have just never have developed into anything. And who knows? Maybe someday I'll go back into some of those files and pull it up. But uh, you know, I, I just for some reason or another, um, you know, I ditch a lot of stuff uh, just because I'm not feeling it at the moment. Wow. Okay, I want to vary the shot and then uh, I want to start with the projects you've dealt with in the past. Okay. Okay. So would this be uh, this this is just a layer, like it's layering one after, so yeah. is, this, is this like progressive then? Yeah. So it's just uh, This is more housey, yeah. Yeah. Progressive house. There's a track that um, a label, uh, Yoshi Toshi, which is Deep Dish's label, mm -hmm. um, they've been asking me for some original projects for a while. Mm -hmm. So uh, past week uh, I had some ideas in mind, and uh, so I sat down and kind of sketched this track out, which uh, has been sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, just some changes that I that I'm gonna make to it, but. Uh, yeah, this is what, what's going right now, and uh, we'll see what happens with it. Just an original sketch kind of thing, just experimenting. Nice. So what kind of uh, projects are you into right now, at this, this moment? Well, I've always enjoyed taking something that's more commercial and giving it the underground feel, or, or the feel of like a legitimate club. Mm -hmm. um, like what I did with the Backstreet Boys is, you know, did that exact same thing, just give it this weird, clubby, you would never know it's the Backstreet Boys until all of a sudden you hear the vocals come in and right. you're like, oh my god, this that's is the Backstreet, the Backstreet. Yeah. whoa! And that's what I'm kind of into. I, I really enjoy just making people freak out when they hear one of their favorite artists. So could you take like anyone, could you take someone like Mariah Carey yeah, and, uh, and, and blow her up and make her sound completely tech technotronic kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah, anybody, right? Yeah, anybody. Michael Jackson, right. any I mean anyone you want. Some of you have basically. to work a little harder than other uh, yeah. a little harder than others. But right. yeah, just about anybody, uh, you know, once you strip it down and you get down to the vocals mm -hmm. and get down to the raw, you know, feel of just the vocals and mm -hmm. none of the other cheesy production that a lot of times right. accompanies it. And then you start stripping it down and just putting some really funky things into it with a 4-4 kick. Uh, a lot of times it just starts taking shape all by itself. A track will just totally change its personality right. just by changing the drums around or just changing it into something funky, like a funky bass line. Alright, let's cut for a minute. What, uh, what did you do with Madonna? Um, with Madonna, it was a... Uh, it was a, the story of behind the whole Madonna thing was um, Warner Brothers uh, came to me and said, hey, you know, we got this Madonna track, you know, it's an old classic remake, you know, can you play it? And I said, there's no way I can play this, it's just too slow, it's just not my vibe whatsoever. And they're like, well, what can, can you make it your vibe? Can you, and and uh, I did that, and uh, we sent the track over to uh, Madonna after we got done with it and uh, she was actually uh, filming the Avita movie mm -hmm. and uh, she liked it so much that uh, Warner Brothers uh, put it out and it was uh, Love Don't Live Here Anymore and I collaborated with C.L. McSpadden on that track and uh, oh. that was uh, kind of our Madonna uh, <laughs> moment. That was kind of, it was a lot of fun, nice. definitely a lot of fun because you got to hear the, you know, what she did in the studio uh, 
it's it's amazing to hear some of the outtakes from it. You can really hear how talented an artist really is just from hearing the outtakes, uh, stuff that the general public never gets to hear. Right. Did you do that from here, or did you receive 24 tracks? How did you do that? No, I just uh, I just request the uh, vocal track, the acapella. That's all I request. I don't want to hear anything else because a lot of times. You don't you're need not, anything else. You yeah. don't need their bass. Ba and and their then you're also, you're, 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 if you just take the vocal track and nothing else, then you get forced to give it your vibe and 100% your vibe. Right. Not, not the other producers, just your vibe. And so I always request just the vocal track and the original song to listen to just as a reference. So if someone's singing at like 85, 90 beats per minute or something like that, I mean, to make it into a club like dance beat, what do you play? 120, 130 beats 100, per minute? Yeah, 130. A lot of times if it's really slow, um, it's hard to stretch it and make it make it sound mm -hmm. natural at, at a much faster tempo. So sometimes what you do is you just take the vocals and you sample them throughout. Okay. Whereas other times, if it's something that's close, it's in, within the range, mm -hmm. then you can stretch it out and make a full vocal production right. with the, the full verses and, and choruses. But uh, a lot of times with the, uh, the very slow things, the 80, 90 beats per minute things, uh -huh. you just take little samples and kind of funk it up that way. Is it like, so you're, you're, you can either, you can kind of time stretch them? Yeah, yeah. And then compress them, whatever you want to do? Yeah, it, it's, yeah. There, we have a time stretching program in here and uh, that's exactly what it does. You type in the original BPM, you type in the desired BPM, you hit enter and you, you know, just so wait how much for it to um, instrumental knowledge do you have to have? Do you play any actual instruments? I play the keyboard and program, and obviously any of the uh, sounds that you hear all so, come from uh, electronic instruments. So, so that's the millennium for you. I mean, it's this is it. This is. Tell us about your equipment. So you're doing. Um, what do you use on uh, for software oh. programs and stuff? Uh, mostly uh, Pro Tools, which is uh, my mixing program, uh -huh. um, and then I have Vision, which is my sequencing program, and I have Sample Cell, which is my sampling program, mm -hmm. and then I just run all these keyboards um, through Vision and Pro Tools, lock them all up, and uh, there you go. You know, yeah. just whatever I play in the keyboard uh, on the keyboards gets recorded right into the computer. So how many uh, records do you have out? You said 26? We have 29. Uh, 29? We're on our 30th release 30th right 30th now release. On, plastic. on plastic. And then I've done probably well over 60 remixes for uh, major and independent labels. Wow. Um, so that's how many releases per uh, per vinyl, like 5,000, 10,000, something like that? For uh, the, the plastic releases? Yeah. yeah uh, it, it, Worldwide, um, probably about that. And uh, the big thing, though, is licensing. Mm -hmm. What you try to do is you put out records mm -hmm. that Europe will come in and, and buy up. Okay. Um, for example, my song, You Won't See Me Cry, mm -hmm. we've licensed to uh, like three or four different labels mm -hmm. in Europe. And each one of those labels then takes it over and they put it out. And then we get the royalties and mm -hmm. the advances and, and things like that. From uh, your your uh, featured song that you were talking about. Um, okay, let me put it on then. Okay. Let me, let's do that. So it's playing. That's yeah. That's that's the key. Are you aiming for that someday, maybe? Oh yeah, no doubt. Yeah. I mean, that's. Can you do quiet. it? Huh? Oh, we're live. Okay, oh, so we're. Okay. Um, tell us a song we're gonna listen to here real quick. Um, this is "You Won't See Me Cry." Uh -huh. This is uh, the one that uh, made it onto the Billboard chart and uh, yeah. is uh, still. Uh, a year later, still, still doing well in, in Europe. We've uh, licensed it to uh, three labels in Europe. Uh, one in England, one in Germany, and uh, I forget where the other one is <laughs> because it was third party license. But yeah, it's it's all over the place uh, over there. And uh, so tell us and, about um, your connections and you know your your people you know in Europe who you do business with over there. Well. As you know, the whole goal for our label is to get light is for licensing, and we've licensed stuff uh, to John Digweed for his Bedrock CD. We've licensed uh, songs uh, to Sasha and Digweed for their Northern Exposure CDs, um, and then we've also licensed uh, something to Sasha for it live in Ibiza. Um, so that's kind of the circle that you know that I kind of. Uh, promote to is uh, do you Sasha. Do there? Do you get to go back? Uh, yeah, I go I go to Europe probably about yeah. three or four times a year. Wow. Um, I just uh, DJed in Ibiza two weeks ago, and so uh, that was a lot of fun. Got to hang out with everybody there. Right on. That was in, that was in Spain, right? Yeah.
Okay. So we're jamming here. Yeah, this is uh, You Won't See Me Cry. Um, vocals by Deidre Radford, who is from the band Sipping Soma, who uh, we've also just uh, signed. And um, it was all done right here in, in this studio. Uh, this is the Deep Sky mix, which uh, they, they turned out a nice little... How many different uh, mixes do you have of this? There are here? now um, six different mixes of this. And wow. about to be uh, a seventh, because there's another label in Germany that just uh, licensed this, and uh, they're going to do their own versions also. So you have the copyright, though. I mean, oh, yeah. So yeah. You, every yeah. time someone takes it and wants to do something different, yeah, you I get paid for it. Exactly. Wow. Really? <laughs> you can't, can't get any better than that. And, uh, okay, uh, what is the most um, lucrative form of what you're doing? Is Club Freedom, Classic Records, this recording? Um, the best, uh, uh, it's, it's, Ugh. I guess um, it, it's that's a tough, that's yeah. a tough question. Um, basically, w the way the music works is you just throw the stuff up against the wall, and eventually that one is gonna hit. That one, the worldwide smash. That's you know, everybody sings, and and that that's that's the one that's gonna set you up for, for life, basically. Um, but uh, so all these other songs, some of them, you know. We sell a couple thousand copies of some of them, like this one. We license to uh, quite a few different countries all over the world, but we're still waiting for that one big one. The uh, you know the that ATB record the, the platinum, or, or yeah, yeah exactly platinum, the, the one that the one that yeah. that that winds up on the uh, you know totally uh, two thousand compilations. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and you're well on your way. I mean, you're there. I mean, you're well on your way. You've been in the industry what 15 years? I mean, you've been going since what 84? 84 is when I uh, when I started music. Yeah. Um, I used to break dance, and 84 yeah. is when I just started getting into nothing but the music. Nice. So, what word of encouragement would you give to uh, the kids out there, the young guys, or, or you know, girls, whoever, young divas, the yeah. DJs, you know, the, the the new talents coming up that want to do something and be somebody. You know, what uh, what kind of advice would would you give them? Um, to just go ahead and, and do it because with uh, today's equipment it's not like it was 10, 15, 20 years ago yeah. when you had to pay half a million dollars just to get into a studio to record an album. Right. Nowadays you can do it all on, on equipment that's less than this mm -hmm. and um, you just go in there, you do it, you do it, it's what comes out of your heart and, uh, and pay attention to details and, and get out there and, and, and meet exactly. people, right? Exactly, it's, it's all meet about people. It's all about, all about the world, the, the world stage. It's all about <laughs> the, the world, world stage. stage. And they are. What's the number on there? Twenty thousand? I mean, that's God. Yeah, it's, it's Jesus. That's it's quite a bit. I, I mean, seriously, I don't count. I mean, it's yeah. You get to a point where it's just like, how do you count it? Did Did you ever? So I mean, obviously, vinyls not going anywhere. See, I always just think vinyls were like old fashioned. That's what my dad has. Yeah, my dad no. probably has about like from here to like. Here, that's his whole collection, you know, from like the, from the 50s, 60s, 70s, you know, all the way up, but. Wow. And this is half of it, you say? Yeah. Yeah, only half of it. One, two, three, four, five, six rows.